Hi, my name is Tim Mao, and I manage the technical support team here at X-Ray. Today, we're going to talk about connecting an instrument and calibrating your instrument when you're using X-Ray's Color IQC software. So let's get started. So we're going to open the software without an e-job, and it's going to ask me what kind of instrument I have. So today, I'm using a CI-64 UV instrument which is generic, uh, there's a family of instruments there called x right CI6X. So I'm going to begin by selecting that. Now, depending on what kind of instrument you're connecting, you'll have different options in this screen. For me, I can select which model of the CI6X series I'm using. Mine is, as I mentioned, a CI64 UV. Um, we have the ability to select a transform. If I need to make this instrument behave like something else, I don't in my case. Um, the trigger style is set to foot, which means that this instrument works kind of like a stapler. When I close it, when I press it closed, that's the foot triggering um, the measurement. So I'll go ahead and hit next. Now I have a chance to name my spectro, whatever I want to call it. I'm going to call it Tim's Spectro. And you'll see it has a place for the, for the serial number, but that, that's automatically determined. So as soon as they talk to each other, the software and the instrument in just a moment, that will be determined. How am I connecting? USB in this case. Um, some instruments have serial, some instruments have Bluetooth. We're going to use USB in, in our situation. Um, and then finally, I'm going to hit um, finish. It's going to always do a predefined calibration mode, and we'll look at those modes in just a moment. But we're going to hit finish here. It's going to go out and try to talk to the instrument for a moment. And it appears that it worked because we got no error messages in response. So now, if I go back to this installer configure, you can see my spectro. It's pulled the serial number of the instrument there. right? And I can choose now to set calibration modes. And the default calibration mode is simply using the instrument in its default state. Um, let's click on modify to see all the options here. Again, depending on your instrument, what type of instrument you have, you'll have different options. For example, you'll see there's transmittance, transmit, um, several transmittance and haze measurements. Those are grayed out because I can't do those with a handheld instrument. If I had a benchtop instrument, I'd have those options. Um, I can choose on this instrument which port I'm using because it's switchable between a 14 and a 6 millimeter aperture. Um, I can choose whether or not to calibrate the UV energy. I can choose the calibration interval. By default, it's 240 minutes or 4 hours. So we're going to leave it there um, in its default state. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the word calibrate here if we wanted to calibrate at this point. I'm going to not do it that way and show you how I might do it in more normal use. So I'm going to open up a job, which is a place where I store measurements. And there are icons up here to select a calibration mode, to calibrate the spectro, um, to do measurements. And even if I try to measure and I'm not calibrated, the software will, will force a calibration on me. But I'm going to choose to calibrate the spectro. In the current mode, you'll see it says, Press OK, then calibrate spectro following on-screen instructions. And it's talking about the on-screen instructions of the instrument, which right now says to me, white calibration, select next to continue. I'm going to go over here and hit next. And it says, measure white plaque. So the calibration standard has a white plaque. I remove its protective cover, place the instrument on top, press down. The lights indicate that it's measuring the calibration plaque. The beep means that it was successful. And it now on the instrument says measure black trap. So I'm going to rotate this, put the cover back on so I don't whoops, damage my plaque, and now measure this what's called a light trap. Calibrating black, and the calibration is now complete. We've got a check mark on the screen. And if I come back to the software and click on OK, calibration is complete. My instrument is now talking to the software. It's ready for me to do measurements. If you need to know how to measure standards and measure trials, please see our video that will walk you through that process. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Tim Mao, and I manage the technical support team here at X-Ray. Today I'm going to be walking you through our Color IQC software and the basics of how to create a standard and then measure some trials and look at the data that gets generated when we do those comparisons. So let's get started in our IQC software. To create a standard, I'm going to go to the icon up here, looks like a target or a standard in our case. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open a dialog box for me to enter the name of the standard. So I'm going to go very simple and just call it by, a, by its name. In this case, it's beige. I'm going to click on Next, and you'll notice it's going to say Waiting on Triggered Read, telling me that the software is waiting for me to take the instrument, my CI-64 in this case, press down, and it completes the measurement. Now I can close that window and you'll see that I have a color standard created. Again, it maintains that target icon indicating for us a standard or a target that you're trying to achieve. We can see it's colorimetric data here, LABCH, identifying the color of that standard. And right above, we can see the tolerance that I have set. Um, in my particular case, I have a pass-fail tolerance of 1.00 um, in Delta E 2000. So let's measure a couple of samples to compare to that. And what we call those in IQC is trials. And the icon for that looks like a dart or an arrow being thrown at the target. So we click on that. Again, it's going to prompt me for a name. I will just simply call this trial one. I can take the instrument and measure. And it will capture that. And we can see right away that with the little green indicator and the word passed here that that trial passed against my standard using this tolerance. If I want to measure another trial, let's say trial two, I can simply come in here. I'm just going to backspace and hit trial two, move over to that next trial, take a measurement. And I can see that one passed as well. And we can see the delta values for those trials against that standard. Now that's, a gr that's the best kind of situation. Hopefully all of your production goes that well. But it's maybe not reality. Um, that color is always that close. So we're going to do another standard and trial and talk about some of the differences of ways we can do this. So again, we're going to be creating a standard. Back to our target icon. This time the standard I'm creating, I'm going to call green. Um, a tip here that it says after you enter the name to press next, you can click on it. You can always hit the enter key instead of hitting next. That will advance you as well. Okay. Press and hold the instrument, take the measurement, and you see we get our green standard is now in place um, in the software. I'm going to close that standard measurement window. Um, you'll see both of my standards here. Um, the little plus sign next to the beige indicates it has trials underneath it. The green does not. And now I'm going to measure a single trial against that green. And a tip here, if I don't want to take time to name all of my trials, I can simply on this screen take a measurement. And when I do that, <clears throat> it will automatically identify the trial with a date timestamp. Um, som sometimes the naming of the trial isn't as important to us as when did we measure it, so we can simply use that information. And you can see this one passed as well, but we're in more of a realistic kind of situation maybe. We've got a 0.81 delta E on this particular sample. We can see it plotted over here. Um, it's green because it passes and it's inside the ellipse. The yellow area in my ellipse would be my action limit area or my margin. Um, and, and I could make determinations on, on what I need to do if my color were to fail from that point. So those are the basics of standard creation, measuring trials. We will be doing additional videos to help you dive deeper into the evaluation of the results and the things that you do based on those results. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tim Mao and I manage the technical support team here at X-Ray. 
Today, we're going to be talking about IQC software and specifically about how we manage tolerances and use those tolerances to ensure that we're shipping good color to our customers. So let's dive into the software. You'll see that I have a job opened with my green color standard with a, a large variety of trials underneath. And those trials are identified in green if they pass, red if they fail, and if we scroll down, we even have one that's yellow and says margin. But how does the software know what to make for those determinations? We can find that out by launching into the settings dialog of our job, and when we do that, it automatically opens up the QC tab here at the top where it tells us that stored in this job is the pass-fail using Delta E2000. And I've got to drop down to select other methods for, for tolerancing that. I'm going to stick with DE2000. Um, further down, where it says system default tolerances, I can put in my pass-fail number. In this case, I'm using 1.0. And well, of course, what that means is that any colors measured, any trials with a Delta E2000 less than 1.0 will, will pass, more than 1.0 are going to fail. You'll note that right underneath that we have something called a margin percent. And in the margin percent, um, we've got it set to 0 0.10 or 10 percent. What this means with a tolerance of 1.0 is that anything between 0.9 and one, the top 10% of my tolerance, anything in there is gonna, that falls in there is going to be labeled as margin, meaning I'm approaching failure, so it might be time for me to take some action. This is especially helpful if you're in the process of measuring um, repeatedly through a run, right, a batch of something. You're, ma you're making 10,000 of them and you take a measurement once every thousand samples. If you start to see those trials starting to drift further and further from the standard and you start moving from a green pass to a yellow margin, it can be an indicator for you to take some action. So the last piece of the tolerance that we want to talk about today is actually on a different tab. It's right next door on the tab called General, and that is which Illuminant Observer is being used. And it's the tolerance will use the first of your Illuminant Observers to do its pass-fail determination. So again, I'm using a D65 10 degree observer illuminant, sorry, D65 10 degree illuminant observer with my DE2000 tolerance. So again, we can see the indications by the color of the dots, by the words over here. Um, we have other ways we're displaying those, those measurements, visual representation, reflectance curves. Those two are, are useful but not necessarily when we're evaluating a tolerance. But when we come over here to the scatter plot, it can be very useful. And so I can see the green dots and the red dots. I can see the green area of my tolerance. I can see the yellow area of my tolerance. And of course, anything outside of that is red. Now, one of the first things that jumps to me when I look at this is why do I have a red dot that appears to be in the middle of the green tolerance? The nice, one of the nice things I can do is I can simply point at that and click on it and it'll highlight that sample for me here and here. And I can see while in the A and B directions, right, yellow, red, green, blue dimensions, that sample is inside the tolerance, the reality is it's, it's too dark. And because I'm only looking at two dimensions here, I don't notice that three dimensionality. Um, and that's why it appears to be a red dot that's passing um, or should be passing visually. So another way to look at that is we can right click here and maximize this to make it even larger. And then to understand the three dimensionality of it, we actually can switch to a 3D view. The 3D view, in this case I have it set as a wireframe and with my mouse I can click and rotate. And you can see samples that are passing, failing, margin, and so forth, three-dimensionally, that can help you understand why the samples fall where they fall. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the 3D and restore this back to its size. Now, sometimes we make a determination that I've got samples like these, and I can double-click here, by the way, and it'll highlight them out in the plot as well. So I have a 1.18 and a 1.19. 
Maybe my customer is visually accepting that, and even I visually accept it. It might indicate that I need to adjust my tolerance. Well, that is, of course, as simple as going back to where we started, and I'm going to change my 1.0 to 1.20 and apply and hit OK. And now you'll notice that those samples that were failing, they're now in the margin because they're very close to that 1.20. But my sample that was at 0.96 and in the margin previously has now actually in the pass area because I've adjusted the tolerance to better agree with my customer. And that's ultimately the goal. Your tolerance should be designed so that it helps you determine what your customer is going to do. It, if it's passing, your customer should not be rejecting the product. And if you have a properly created tolerance, you can achieve that. Thank you for joining us today.